Today, education for Aboriginal students is vastly different from the infamous Indian residential schools of the past. The government decided that they would take children away from their families and off the reserves and bring them into the school to teach them the Canadian culture. Maybe residential school was set up essentially to assimilate the Aboriginal people into white society, which uh, miserably failed. Industrial residential school times, uh, the whole point is to really create almost like domestic servants out of Aboriginal people. Can you tell me what an Indian residential school is? Are those the schools from way back in the day where they would try to convert the native people to Christianity and treated them very poorly, I think? I always talk to my students about this, you know, say, you know, did you know <laughs> this is what happened in the... Uh, in the instruction of uh, Cree children. And it was basically, you know, they're taught all your traditional culture is wrong. It's the work of the devil. Dancing is evil. Singing is evil. All these things is evil. Residential school stripped me from my rights. Residential school stripped me from my language. None of them could even really speak English. And uh, if they didn't, they just got their asses kicked. Father Fafard, he asked the question, who is breaking the first commandment? And then the, uh, the answer is, first, he who worships devils, animals, the sun, stars, false idols. Second, he who does drumming, shaking tent, evil singing, evil feasting, evil smoking, and dream quests, because these are the devil's creation. That's just bizarre. You do not know how many people died and suffered in residential school. Where you've had societies that were functioning quite well, you know. There's, they didn't need any kind of change. They had an excellent relationship with the creator and the natural powers of the universe, beautiful spiritual traditions, beautiful cultural values, and uh, then to have that taken away, you know. Now they're trying to pay us to keep our mouths shut. What, 30 grand? 30 grand for how many years of suffering since we were four years old? That isn't worth it, man. At the end of the day, as a survivor of a residential school, uh, the CEP is not going to help uh, in terms of healing. It'll recognize our common experience. If it wasn't for residential school, man, I wouldn't be here right now, to tell you the truth. I'd probably still be in the res speaking my language, man. Straight up. From the time the first treaties were signed, Aboriginal people fought hard to have the promises in these agreements honored. But it's been an uphill battle that has lasted for centuries. And today in Canada, treaty rights and land claims are still far from being fully acknowledged and respected. It's an infringement on the integrity of the treaties when they were signed themselves, that Aboriginal people would be able to retain not only their way of life, but also in some cases uh, be able to utilize their lands to prosper. Most of the resources of, of Canada come from the lands that are still pristine where Aboriginal people still live. There's so much money at stake. There's so much money from multinational corporations. How many billions and billions of dollars are, are being, you know, taken from the natural resources essentially. So if you own that, you know, you don't want to sort of give any of that up. It wasn't long before the newcomers were dividing our lands amongst themselves. In 1763, King George III set forth a royal proclamation defining the process for obtaining access and title to First Nations lands. So they're not really protecting Aboriginal interests, they're protecting their own interests. Because their fear is, what if Aboriginal people are true owners of the land? then they would have the right to negotiate with anybody over those resources and such. Land claim is uh, the native people have actually claimed the fact that they were here first and that certain pieces of land do belong to them. It's their right to have it. Aboriginal people have paid the highest price for the minimum uh, uh, of subsistence because basically what Aboriginal people are living on is uh, subsistence allowance. That's it. Just enough to get by. 
Okay, so I mean, what's the highest price? Is look at the look at the amounts of land that were signed in treaty. Look at the wealth uh, that that has been generated for Canadians. This is the homeland for Aboriginal people, First Nations people. There is no other homeland. You know, this is where they have lived for time of memorial. So now they're put on reserves on leftover land, right, uh, in their own homeland. I'm surprised that that there hasn't been more of a of a revolt of some kind. Nation states have to start to recognize, according to the um, you know international forms and such, uh, Aboriginal rights to the lands that they live on and have subsisted on for thousands of years. However, Canada has been one of the uh, few countries that have not signed on to the International Declaration of Indigenous Rights. These people are in desperate need of a history lesson. They need to know what you know that what the history is and it's recent history and and i think that people can't seem to i don't know why but they just can't seem to get their head around the fact that this is their homeland this is the aboriginal the first nations people's homeland you know anishinaabe people have lived here since time immemorial can you think of one thing that could happen right now that would help aboriginal people in canada we've just people just change the way they think you know just try to eliminate racism from their vocabulary and try to eliminate stereotypes about Aboriginal people. Maybe get out and meet some Aboriginal people, attend uh, different Aboriginal ceremonies and be a part of the culture. So I think if there's more sharing of uh, cultures and ideas, that'd be really helpful as well.